Greetings everyone from the Philippines. I am Robert Delgado, a doctoral student of music at the University of the Philippines, and I will be presenting Choral Singing in the Philippines During the Pandemic, Articulating the Influencing Reciprocity Between Music and Society. The spread of the COVID-19 virus in the Philippines in its initial stages alarmed the whole country. By March 16, 2020, there had been 76 reported new cases of the infected, totaling 140 confirmed cases, including 12 deaths, and the number kept rising by the day. The administration of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte declared the whole country under a state of calamity for a period of six months from March 16, 2020, by imposing an enhanced community quarantine or ECQ throughout the island of Luzon, including Metro Manila. Ten days after the imposition of the ECQ, a news about a choir composed of doctors and alumni of the University of the Philippines College of Medicine showing their virtual choral rendition of a motivational song that went viral. This impacted the lives of the whole choral community and motivated them to create their own virtual recordings and other related activities as their contribution to society in alleviating the trauma that the country had been experiencing. This begs the question, how did choral groups develop their prolific presence in the Philippines and how were the choral community able to manifest an immediate response to the crisis as their social contribution in easing the terror of the pandemic. Having been engaged in choral music since I was 10, I shall use autoethnography as a methodology and narrate some of the important movements in choral music in the Philippines from the last quarter of the 20th century up to the present times. I use the narratives to analyze the processual systems and the micro-macro social structures inherent to these movements through the different sociological and cultural theories of scholars Richard Peterson and his production of Culture, Arts World Perspective by Howard Becker, Rationalization Theory by Max Weber, and the Field Theory by Pierre Bourdieu. This study targets future researchers and policymakers in looking into the role of the performing arts in shaping the societal fabric of their community. Community singing has been part of the tradition in the Philippines since the pre-colonial times. However, it was the Spanish colonizers who introduced the Western practice and they imposed its role in responding to the church services of the Roman Catholic Church. The Presidential Proclamation No. 1173 established the National Music Competitions for Young Artists, or NAMSHA, in 1972 by the late President Marcos. This encouraged primary, secondary, and college schools levels, including family singing groups, to participate in these yearly music competitions. I was only 10 years old when introduced to this music making. When our school's primary choir participated in this contest, little did I know that this has impacted my life to a point that I will be involved in choral singing for the rest of my life. Be that as it may, our choir passed through several processes and won our way up to the national competition. The macro representation, the national government cultural policy as mentioned, led in this music making during that time. Also, it has engaged the Department of Education to collaborate in the process. Our families, the microstructure, and the school were also engaged. On the one hand, the school provided the fringe support to the choir, such as the food and snack, uniform, transportation, and even school credits to the members of the choir. On the other hand, the family provided emotional and psychological support to each member of the group. This support, according to Brand, includes parental attitude towards the involvement of the child in the musical activity, parental attendance in the child's musical performances, ownership of musical materials, and providing early education, and participation of the parent in the music-making activities. 
In Philippine society, not only the parent-child relationship is heated, but also the conductor member is formed as the extension of family. If the teacher serves as the second parent of the child outside the homes, it is also apparent for the kind of relationship between the conductor and its members. This illuminates what Virginia Miralau asserts that due to the security and protection provided by the families, Filipinos tend to recreate family-like or primary types of relationship outside the family. These social structures, such as the family, school, national government, and the engaged government agencies, are part of the network analysis, a term postulated by H.C. White that reflects the production of culture perspective as formulated by Richard Peterson. It is a creative application of organizational theory, institutional economics, and network analysis to the study of cultural practices such as choral singing. Another relevant choral event in the past is the staging of a city-wide choral competition called Awitan sa Barangay. This time, the different barangays of the city are encouraged to participate. As a family of musicians, we were tapped by the community to lead in the music making. Here, I observed a more intimate kind of relationship being espoused. Instead of institutions, individual members of the barangay with different kinds of professions contributed to the whole process. Apart from our family that provided the musical training, we outsourced people who would provide food, venue of the rehearsals, sponsors for the costumes, designers, choreographer, transportation, and those extra people who would construct hand props needed for our participation, all of which were members of the barangay. In this process, a different dimension of sociological stratification is illustrated. This approach reflects the theory written by Howard Becker, coined as Arts World which is based on his book with the same title. Focusing on the various forms of work is an essential ingredient in the study of music making in the art world approach. When I was a college student, I was engaged to arrange a contest piece that would be used in a choral competition among the bank industry. This is a kind of choral activity where each participating choir is a part of the bureaucratic structure of a business organization. Members of the choir who are part of the rank and file employees of the business organization get incentives being members of the group. They either get additional cash allowance per rehearsal, remuneration on overtime during rehearsals, free uniforms, and others as provided by their human resources department. The members get to meet the officials of the bank, including the chief executive officer vis-a-vis -vis, when the former gets to perform for important corporate events, which is an ordinary employee would never get to experience. The officials of the bank, on the other hand, are always proud of the achievements of their choir as the latter acts as company's ambassadors of goodwill in music. Apart from representing the company in the industry-wide events such as the competition, the group gets to perform for corporate events of the company. This relational social structure of choral singing reflects the bureaucratic or the rational legal model, a theory developed by German scholar Max Weber. Based on Weber's principle of bureaucracy, the music making of company choirs also follows the same principles. Number one, the choir has specialized role, a bait, non-functional. Number two, recruitment based on the musical and singing skills of the individual. Number three, members are subject to conduct and strict rules of discipline and control. Number four, hierarchy of the members are based on the singing ability and musical knowledge. Usually, hierarchy is based on the capacity to do solo singing and lead a certain section of the choir. Number five, music making are not based on personal attachment of the conductor and the member. And number six, political neutrality of the choir to office disputes. Since business organization exists due to the concept of capitalization or economic development, 
company choirs are only an optional part of the structure. It can exist or not exist based on the direction given by the officials of the organization. Towards the last decades of the 20th century, choral groups coming from the different social structures of society had been established, mostly for the purpose of singing in their respective events and in some cases participating in local competitions and festivals, including the ones mentioned above. In 1989, the Philippine Madrigal Singers, where I was a part of, created a sensational news among choral groups when it won all the five major European choral competitions it joined, totaling more than 20 laureate prizes. Since then, an awareness for choral singing has been sprouted and developed in the country. More choral enthusiasts, private and public institutions, communities organize their own groups. Cultural agencies and private producers of culture engage choral groups in their programs and policies. More importantly, existing choral groups emulated the feats of the madrigal singers by participating and winning in international choral competitions. This is reflective of what Bourdieu determines as the hierarchy of the field. Those below the dominant sector tries to emulate the ones above it. The choral movement in the Philippines has expanded its activities by organizing seminars, workshops, staging international choral competitions, and most importantly, the organization of the Philippine Choral Directors Association or the PCDA. The PCDA was established to bring together the young and new choral conductors to get the latest updates in choral music. On a different space in the field, the Philippine Madrigal Singers continues to dominate since the group continues to win in international competitions, receive international awards, and be engaged by cultural agencies in the country by bringing its singers and alumni to far-flung areas of the country to facilitate workshops, choral sessions to local choral groups. The different processual systems mentioned above have been inherent in the stratification as represented by the micro-macro social structures that without the value of these institutions, the proliferation of choral singing would not be realized. Thus, choral singing has become embedded and intertwined with the social structures that serve as its support and foundation, where these social structures that form the social fabric of a community affect the music making of choral singing. This is related to the cultural study of scene theory, a conceptual framework known to have been firstly cited by Will Straw and the garden culture ascribed by Ernest Gellner. On the one hand, scenes often transcend particular communities that reflect and actualize a state of relationship between social groups within the community and coalesce with a certain kind of music. And on the other hand, Garden cultures are ascribed to a culture where it is divided into savage and cultivated varieties. Both of these metaphors articulate a Burdotian field where a notion of space of interaction among key players of a certain industry occurs. The next slide shows an illustration of the conceptual framework of this postulation, where a garden is a metaphor of a field of cultural production where social structures play an imminent role in the music making, while the forces of struggles and the forces of power are motivations that make the process of production either thrive or wither. The diagram shows a garden landscape sketch articulating a field where trees, shrubs, and plants and other botanical elements represent the network of choirs and choral singing with the social structures attached to them as their support and foundation. The varieties of social structures, for example, the density of the trunks, branch, and twigs are embraced by land, air, and clouds that symbolize the forces of power and struggles that make these cultural objects either thrive or wither. Some botanical elements are situated on the upper echelon of the field where they dominate the landscape, while the other elements are on the lower position where they subordinate. These elements are all interconnected and have their position takings within the field. Conclusion By far, 
This study has illustrated selected events in Philippine society that were responsible for the processual system of choral music making that occurred in the past. However, there are more of these events that served as the forces along with the relational value contributed by different societal structures of the society that led to the proliferation of choral singing in Philippine society of the 20th century. Nonetheless, the prolific presence of choral groups in the country has catapulted these choirs to achieve a certain kind of social power and raise their voices in the community in responding to certain crises that strike the country. For example, several choral concerts were held to raise funds in the rehabilitation of the victims affected by the Typhoon Ondoy, one of the most devastating typhoon that hit in the country in 2009. In 2011, Cebu-based choral groups held the fundraising concerts to raise funds for the Child Wish Ministry, a non-profit organization that provides assistance to impoverished school children all over the country. And recently, the virtual choir recording that went viral as initiated by the official choir of the UP College of Medicine has proven this point. They did not just advocate the upliftment of the spirits of their colleagues who had to witness the deaths of co-medical frontliners on top of the hundreds of patients that they had to take care of. They also used choral singing as a tool for therapy as they serenade hospital patients during their free time. What made this story remarkable is the immediate response of choral groups to the societal crisis and also the passion of these choirs to contribute to the society despite the risks they faced during the time of the pandemic. This asserts not only did society become responsible for the proliferation of choral music in Philippine societal fabric, but also choral singing has made its impact to the society, especially in times of crisis. This phenomenon reflects how both Max Weber and Theodore Adorno analyzes the influencing reciprocation between music and society. And that ends my presentation. Thank you.